Welcome to Easy Elim, Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning from two mathematics and our topic for today is statistics. So this is the beginning of a representation of data and one of the ways we can be able to represent data is by use of bar graphs. So we are going to learn how to convert and represent the data that we have been using for the last few classes and represent them now in different ways. One of them is bar graphs. So what are bar graphs? So bar graphs um, are usually consist of a number of spaced rectangles. So there are some cases you have spaces in between, like if you see the bar graph shown below, the number of students against the colors, you notice the colors are red, orange, yellow, and purple. The um, bars are uniform in width but their length depends on the number of students and you can see their spaces in between they can be spaces or not but you can see clearly because of the different colors it helps you to get the information directly and very quickly so let's look at a few examples on how to show our data in a, a, a bar graph so choosing the correct axis is very important and also labeling just like the normal conditions you should have when you're drawing a, a, bar, a bar or a, anything on a chart. So we've been told to create a bar graph using the information. So you have the number of years and the population in millions. So we are going to place the number of years on the x-axis while the population you are going to place them on the y-axis. So since the x-axis we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 years spaced within 10, 10, 10. So we, since our bar graph is a bit, our graph paper is small, so we are just we are not going to leave spaces in between. So the x-axis will represent the number of years. So we have so we will start with 19, 41, 19, 51, 19. 61, 1971, 1981, 1991, and then 2001, and so on. So this represents the year, so you need to label the year. And then on the y-axis, you notice that the highest value is a thousand, and we have how many lines? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a maximum of ten, and the highest is uh, a thousand. So let's see how we are going to represent this data. So we are going to have for every small square is going to represent a hundred, a hundred million. Uh, and then a small square in that big cube is going to represent 20 million. This is what I mean. So you start with 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, 400 million, 500 million, 600 million, 700 million, 800 million, 900 million, and 1,000 million. So... Remember when you are labeling, this y-axis is population. So whatever values I'm placing are supposed to be on your y-axis population in millions. Like that. So let's now represent our dat data. So So in 1941, so 1941 will be represented by this whole uh, uh, square, and then 1951, this whole square, 1981, so on and so forth. So in 1941, we had 320 million. So we are going to go, this is 300, 320 is here. So we are going to draw a line. So this is going to represent the first, uh, the first year, the population, how it was. And then in 1951, 
he had 360. So this is 300, 320, 340. 360 is going to be just close by. So use a ruler, uh, make sure your lines are straight. And then in 1961, we had 440. So 420, 40 is going to be here. In 1971, 550, so this is 520 and 40, so 50 is going to be in between 540 and 560, use a ruler. And final, uh, and not finally, 1981, we had 680. So this is 620 and 40 and 60 and 80. And then 1991, we had 850. So 800 and, 800 and 820, 840. So 850 will be in between 840 and 860. And finally, 2001, we had a thousand, so it goes half to the end. So you notice if you look at your uh, final work, you notice the bars are increasing. You can go ahead and shade uh, your graphs uh, as if you want to shade them, but you can see it's very clear on when you look at your data and you can see the, the continuous increase in the population as the year progressed. Let's do another example. So we surveyed 100 youngsters to find out about their method of transportation to school. The table below shows its list. Uh, lists the finding of this survey, drew a bar graph to illustrate this data. So we are going to put the mode of transportation on the x-axis. And then you put the frequency at the wires axis. So we will start with walking. In this case, we can now separate them. Uh, so we can, we start with walking. I'll just write walk and then cycle. We can leave one space. And then we go to uh, car and then bus and train. So the frequency, the train is 3, uh, walking is 29, so the highest is 35, and we have uh, 10 uh, spaces, so we are going to use a 1 centimeter representing 5, a frequency of 5. So we can start um, uh, here, 5, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, so that because we see our highest value is 35, so this can be zero. So it means one small square represents one, a frequency of one. So in walking, the frequency was 29, so this is 25, so 29 is going to be here. So this is it, you draw the, the bar. Use a ruler, make sure your lines are straight. And then in cycling, the frequency was 15. So 15 is here. And then use those who used cars, 
35 so 35 is the final Those who used bus at a frequency, we had a frequency of 18, being 18 students. So 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's going to be here. And finally, those who use train were three. So zero, one, two, three. Okay. You can go ahead and shade your bar graphs, but you can see like it clearly shows the information on each specific uh, mode of transportation and how many uh, students used that mode of transportation. So that's how you present your work on a bar graph they can be having spaces in between or not but you notice that looking at the at the bar graph you can be able to clearly show and indicate what's happening from like interpret the data very clearly so get more uh, revision questions on the app on the same and also notes on the same so that you can be able to practice on what we have discussed. So see you in the next video as we discuss the next lesson.